Oh, you guys decided to stick around, huh? So, hey, just kidding. Um, first off, I want to say thank you to uh, Rob Mullins, Lisa Peterson, uh, for um, getting together and, and getting the tournament here. That's huge for us to be able to play at home. Uh, it doesn't come without cost and sacrifice. We understand that. Uh, as you can see, those lights there, they don't come by themselves and uh, the stands and everything else. But I think it's well worth it. It showcases our sport, showcases our team and our university across the country. I uh, couldn't be any prouder than the uh, team and the way they performed um, under adversity because it's not easy to play at home and a lot of teams realise that. Sometimes a lot more pressure and I think our team performed well under the gun. Uh, thank you to the umpires, uh, very professional. Uh, and to everybody else that helped organise this, this tournament and to what it is. And uh, what a special day for us being the last game at Howe Field. Uh, Chris Hovengay getting the last win in Howe Field. And then Sheridan Hawkins throwing the last pitch in Howe Field uh, with a strikeout, I believe, right? So that was awesome to see as well. Um, but, uh, you know, just great resilience by our team to come out and get ahead. And then uh, congratulations to North Carolina State. Um, on their performance. I, I don't think I've seen a classier team run by a classier coach uh, in a long time. So I know they're going to be around for a few more years to come with Sean at the helm. So congratulations to them. Thank you. You mentioned yesterday that you guys have had some success in fourth inning. Put your finger on why that is. Is it just the second time through the order and kind of seen the pitcher a little bit? I think that's what it is. We, we start to wear those pitches down. We, we get them into longer counts. Our hitters make the adjustments at the plate, and I've got to credit uh, Coach Kalaitis on that. He keeps talking to him. That's why he's in the dugout. Uh, and we have, you know, Chelsea and myself on the bases. Coach is in there talking to him all the time. You know, we're, we're chatting, we're making those adjustments, and uh, our, our players come up. But that doesn't come without trust, you know, and that's one thing we talk about as a team is trusting in our coaches and trusting in our plan, and I think we did a pretty good job of that. Your first five runs, they came on two out singles, and you've had a lot of two-out runs in the postseason. What does it say, or what about your team's mentality sets it up to kind of be so productive even with two outs? Well, I think it. Uh, we worked on past the bat mentality. You know, list, you made it. You don't have to be a hero here. You don't have to get the big home run like yesterday. We scored six runs without a home run. Um, it's just past the bat, fight on it. And I think we learned that last year in the Alabama series. I think it was we were trying to hit a home runs for you know the last out, all that kind of stuff. When really we just need more base runners. And that's what we do well. Uh, everything we've done all this year, we've always had really a lot of base runners, so over 2.45 per inning, right? I think that's what you come up with. Uh, so that's a great number of uh, base runners per inning. Chris, when did you find out you were going to get the ball today? Um, right when he said the lineup, and I wasn't expecting it, but I was, I was pumped. That's for sure. How, how much confidence does you know, closing out the regional and starting to play to you keep you going into the World Series? And yeah. I think a couple of good outings um, um, back to back is definitely going to give me some more confidence going in there. Um, also, like having experience and being there is also going to give me confidence. Chris, what was that moment like stepping out of the pitcher circle for the last time at home? Um, it was awesome. I mean, the crowd gave me a good cheer. So, um, and then just getting to start the game, I was truly honored to start that game. And Coach White told me when I was. Stepping out, he's like, I wanted to give you this standing ovation. I want this to be your moment. So it was awesome. Some click for you, anything you've been working on that the last couple starts started to click? I mean, because it seems like you're going to finish the season pitching as well as you have all year. Um, yeah, I just, every time I'm in the bullpen when Janelle's with me, we just focus on hitting my spots and just bringing that into the game every time. She's really good about keeping me in check in practice and just, she's like, just pretend you're in the game right here, you know, like just keep doing what you're doing and it'll be all, all good. So your command somehow clicked though the last couple starts better than it had in the regular season? Um, yeah, I think so, yeah. Janelle, when you warmer and her up in the bullpen, did you see that she had good stuff today coming in or is it kind of a, a little bit of a find as we go process when you get out there in the game? No, I think Hove has had a lot of consistent outings um, in the past few games. So I'm, I'm very confident in her, whether it's Sheridan or Hove, but um, no, you really stepped it up, Hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I felt good going into that game, for sure. Yeah. Chris, after the third, uh, you went to the bullpen and threw with Sharon, and she told you, you know, just keep throwing harder, that's when you're best. Mm -hmm. You know, how was that, uh, was that kind of relaxing for you to come out of the fourth and kind of go through the rest of your start? Um, well, she meant throwing hard as in overhand throwing hard, because I think when I screw up is when I try and, like, lob it over there. Mm -hmm. um, so I just got to... Yeah, just chuck it over there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the pin and lob it. Yeah. And I, like, even 
um, at the beginning of the inning where I got a ball, I told Janelle, I was like, I need to throw overhand. Like, I haven't thrown an overhand pitch in three innings, and I need to throw overhand. And then, sure enough, I got a ball that inning, and I just ran it over there. <laughs> when you're rallying and stringing together those hits, you're just chopping a bunch of balls through the infield. Is that purely that past the bat mentality you're talking about, or is it something that pitcher was doing that that approach made sense as well? Yeah, it, it is. We. We were trying to take advantage of our hard infield, and um, you know we know we want to pressure their infield with our base runners. We have speed, and you know the speed you can't steal first base. So we need to get people on, and that slap hit works really well, especially when you're struggling to get timed up off a good pitcher, you know like Wyman. Wyman's tough. I mean, she moves the ball around. It's got late break, a good changeup. So for us to be able to get people on base was huge, and get ten hits. Uh, that, that was a good performance for us today. You see anything different from Wyman today? Success in the second time through the yeah. order in both games. Did you see anything different coming out? Yeah, they, they threw a few, quite a few less change ups to start off with and threw a lot more up, a lot more screw balls and up balls, uh, trying to get us to pop up, obviously, trying to keep us from hitting it on the ground. So that, that was their mentality. But uh, we were able to adjust on that. We started to lay off that high pitch, bring it down where we could handle it. And that's what we got to do. That's the adjustments we try to make. It's just an important step to our goal. I mean, this team has worked really hard all year, and we've all had the same goal. So it's just one more step. Janelle, for your home run, did you kind of feel like that was like a nail in the coffin kind of thing that you guys going up 9-2, that it was kind of the last like ending of it? Um, yeah, I mean, scoring more runs is always a good feeling. But um, it's never over till it's over, so not really. but. <laughs> They're so humble. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you get a good? Uh, you have a sense of what the pitch was, or did you just react? I just kind of reacted. There were runners on base, so I was looking to drive it in the gap and either move runners or score runners, and it worked out. You sent her a bat. She just hacks, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, I tell you what. This is the MVP of our team right here. This, the, the work she does in the bullpen, like Carissa said. She's second coach, so that she's underestimated there, and she's a, she's a force behind the plate. She's a force at the plate. Uh, this kid does it. So, thanks. Awesome. Um, well, we're probably one of those complete teams out there. There's a number of other great teams out there, and you know, uh, some of them we haven't played this year. We haven't played Alabama. We haven't played uh, LSU. We haven't played uh, you know Tennessee, um, Auburn. Um, but I think that that right now we're clicking pretty well. I think that uh, you know we're we're hitting the ball consistently. Um, today it was good to see our top of the order do a little bit better. Um, you know, so it's hard to pitch around us. Defensively, I think we're doing we're. We're kind of peaking there. We're doing a great job defensively and pitching, obviously, with Carissa merging out uh, and doing a great job for us. Now we have a little bit of depth there. We can uh, we can uh, go back to if Sheridan struggles. What's it, what's it mean as a coach to be around a team like this where you guys had a goal, you know, four or five months ago? And a lot of teams have expectations like this, and all, yeah. all around people aren't able to make expectations at certain times, but you guys have been yeah. able to accomplish this and you know, get the goal in the city for a second. I think that is the, probably the most pleasing thing about this team is the consistency we've shown not only just this season from start, you know, because I don't know what we've lost six games or something, something like that, you know, uh, but we've won three Pac-12 championships in a row. I mean, that puts us in elite competition in this league, and that's something I was telling uh, Lisa Peterson before. I never dreamt we'd be able to do that kind of thing, and so to have this, the team, the ladies, the coaches, everyone buy into this philosophy of that we're going to play one pitch at a time and work a process, and the process being, you know, we got to respect our opposition. We come out and we do the best we can on that day, and we compete. Uh, it says a lot for what these uh, ladies are doing right now, how hard they're working. Have you changed the paradigm though? It seems like this celebration this year compared to this time last year is a little more subdued, a little more like, hey, kind of, this is the expectation. It's it certainly, it, it's, it's not, you still have to do it, but it's like, hey, this job's not done. I mean, I think we're not just going to be happy to go there. We, we need to take the next step. And the next step is getting there. You can't do this without getting there. And, and that's big for us. We need to understand, and I took that away from last year, you know, Alabama, Florida, Certainly didn't win it their first or second time out there. It took the Florida six times to win it. 
Uh, hopefully it doesn't take us that long. We don't know what's going to happen there, but unless you're there, you can't win it. So this is an important step for us. We're excited to be there. We're happy. I think our emotions are kind of uh, held back a little bit because we know that, hey, this is just the beginning of the next step. Was there something from last year as a parent that you think kind of set the stage for this season and I'm, can help you this year, a little bit more maturity, a little bit? Sure. I mean, what, what, what from last year can you take? Well, if you looked at who we lost, you'd say, oh, my gosh, you know, Oregon's going to be struggling without Sio and Peterson and Cuico. You know, those guys are in record books all the time. And so, but we didn't let that phase us. We, you know, obviously got some great transfers in Glasgow and uh, Decker. That certainly helped. But for the most part, the nucleus of the team is there. And now they're juniors. So it's a heavy junior team. And so we're going to have some pretty good experience going into Oklahoma City. I think that should help us from playing there last year. Um, and, and that's what we got to do. We got to just trust on our body of work and uh, not get too, uh, you know, too amped up. What are you guys leaving for Oklahoma We don't know yet. Uh, we'd like to, you know, if everything works out, we'd like to leave tomorrow, probably tomorrow afternoon. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. So uh, you got to, you know, oh, sorry, Monday, Monday Today's afternoon. Saturday. Today, yes, Saturday, Saturday. So get a day off tomorrow, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's free Monday afternoon, sorry. Uh, if not, it'd be Tuesday morning. Yeah, highest attendance in uh, outfield history on the final day, uh, kind of a fitting end. Did we break two? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We did. Sweet, yeah. It's unbelievable. And the support, I mean, you can just feel it the knowledge of the fans, uh, the support, the way they're getting into it. Um, I'm just hoping we keep continuing to build this thing and we have to pack out. Jane Sanders Stadium next year, and and uh, I didn't say this before, but huge, huge thank you to the Sanders family. It's unbelievable uh, what they're they're doing for our program, and uh, these young women deserve it, and the young women are going to play here in the future as well.